fact that we need to be talking to the regions and it needs to have us staging a protest to feel like we get our voices across is deplorable. It's a So the most interesting thing that's happened this semester has definitely been the student protest. Yeah, absolutely. So I think for this assignment, we should just like dig deeper, like ask the students, you know, the hard hitting questions and just figure out like why the student protest even happened, like, you know. Yeah, actually, um, I think uh, Pacific Tiger Broadcasting did a really good video on just like, yeah, that gave great coverage. I think that would be a good place to start looking. Okay. We should watch it then. Yeah, absolutely. Um, let me just pull it up real quick. Hi, my name is Michaela Seals, and I'm here with Pacific Tiger Broadcasting. And as you can see, we are here with the students of Pacific. They have congregated for the protest against no man's yeah. family. Yeah. Oh yeah, I know this guy. He's the um, like the head of the whole thing. His name's Robert Andrews. I think that would be a great place to to start with our. Like do we can interview him. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I See. think that'd be a, a good thing to do. He I, I, he probably knows the most about this whole thing. That's a good idea. Um, I could write his name down. You said you know him, so could you like your, just email him real fast? Yeah, yeah. Hopefully he'll do. We can set up an interview with him, and then we can just go from there. Sounds good. Hi, Robert, hey. Hi, how are you? I'm Tox. Nice, nice to meet you. So, can you tell <laughs> us a bit about who you are and where you're from? Uh, I'm Robert Andrews. I'm from Las Vegas, and I'm an applied economics major. I'm a freshman here at UAP. So, yeah. what position do you have in this whole No Man Pack protest? Um, well, there's just a few of us, but for me, I work on getting the word out. I brainstorm ideas for what we're going to do next. Like, I give speeches at the protest, like, literally 10 feet from where we are right now. And it's really just guiding most of the thought that's going on in our discussions and making it so that it's things students actually want to do, students, like, are things that they can get involved in, things that they care about, yeah. rather than just, like, individual personal problems that we might have with the administration. So how do you think um, President Abe can improve the situation? I think transparency on why she's doing things and communicating with us is going to solve a lot of the issues that we've like come across in the last few years. Because if she had just asked students, it wouldn't have happened. Mm -hmm. you know? Now, you were able to go to her office hours. I was, right? yeah. What did you voice to her? What concerns did you? So I was the luckiest, uh, I was lucky just to get in at all. I was probably one of the first. And first thing I asked her was her response to everything that's going on, whether it's the no confidence, the concern, the like, wide protest, um, people coming to her office hours for the first time ever, like, what is her response to it and how does she continue to work on campus knowing that 93.4% of the people she works with want her fired? I just, I couldn't imagine that. So I asked her and what she told me is that she still has to keep working and that she's going to try. Um, it, basically, that's what she said. She's going to keep trying and it's, I blatantly told her it's a little too late. Like, you can say that you're gonna try now, but why didn't you try when the Board of Regents were given the letter of concern? Which has all the same reasoning that the no confidence does. Every problem on there is the same. So why didn't you fix those before when the faculty had a problem? So I don't wanna say that IBEC is like ruining the school completely or that it's unrecoverable and she should be fired because of it and we, we need someone better. I just, I think that concerns need to be listened to and addressed. Yeah. And then if that leads to her being fired, be, since the faculty wants it, maybe. Um, the fact that anyone who does know what's going on is voicing their opinion and is concerned with the way the university is going, that's that's a bigger impact to me than getting like a certain percentage of the yeah. school. As long as the people that we do have are voicing their opinion, 
and changes being made because of that, uh, that's all that really matters. Of course, we'd want to get more people involved in understanding what's happening, which is what ASUP is trying to do. It's what we're trying to do. It's what the faculty's trying to do. Um, but sometimes it's just you can't reach people. Yeah, and that's true. We've, we accepted that. We're not going to convince everybody. But the people that do want to look at the information and decide for themselves, I think they generally make a certain decision about the administration. Yeah, I think uh, we're very lucky to have leaders like you on campus. Thank you very much. Keep doing what you're doing. Thanks so much, Robert. <laughs> After speaking to Robert, our next step was to talk to the ASUOP staff who were involved in the protest, and also to get the opinion of a faculty member. So we took a walk to the DUC to meet up with them. Uh, Emily Sackett. I am Eleanor Wittrup. I am a professor in the philosophy department. Uh, Liz Malone and I'm from Stockton, California. My name is Grant Kirkpatrick and I'm from Carlsbad, California. Can you describe like the main objectives or goals of the protest? Uh, the protest was just to get call attention to the regents about what is going on with the university. Yeah, I think they raised some really uh, some very serious concerns. Why do we pay our top executives so much money at this university, right? I think that's a very reasonable question to ask. I think some of it might be not all students really know or could, would even reasonably expect that there is a 3% tuition increase every year and that they could do something about it. I think it was effective in the fact that it, it allowed, as I said, you know, more of a, a public awareness, um, not even just on the behalf of you know, regents, but on the behalf of students for them to actually vocalize their concerns right now. I don't think tuition would have been lowered at all if it hadn't been for students speaking up, and I'm so glad that students did. I, what I have noticed is resources going away from academics. Um, the college's budget has been cut, uh, resources for um, but, all of the resources toward the library have been taking the books out, which seems a little odd. What that says to me is that the priorities are wrong. Being president of a university is a very difficult thing. You have to overlook everything that the university is doing. You have complaints from different a aspects, but I think a proper president should be able to, you know, actually take more concern and listen more to the students when they cry out that there are issues going on and I think Pam hasn't necessarily done that. I think maybe where she struggles is getting buy-in from people and making sure that everybody agrees on the plan and that people have been communicated to. I don't think she has bad intentions. I think there's a lot of distrust towards her from um, faculty and students due to the constant budget cuts and the constant tuition increases. Um, we just don't tell the truth about budgets. We don't have a transparent budget. Um, that is to say, we're not willing to just spell out on paper, plainly, what the philosophy department spends, and what the chemistry department spends, and what we spend on food services, and what we spend on groundskeeping. If this was the behavior of a, uh, a CEO in the private, uh, private sector, that it, she wouldn't still that CEO or president, in my opinion. Right, if the only reason you're staying is because you're getting paid more than $500,000 a year, then I don't know if I want you to be the president, right? I want somebody who's dedicated and believes in our mission as a nonprofit, and it isn't just here because they get paid a lot of money. What else can we do? I think we should keep fighting. Like I said, you know, until we start seeing change or an effort on both the board and um, administration's behalf, I think we should, we will keep going. Uh, be prepared to lose until you win. Uh, it's likely to take a while. Um, change in institutions is slow. And by slow, I mean it's not going to take weeks, it's not going to take months, it's probably going to take years. And use your voice. I mean, I, I don't think students realize how powerful their, their voices really are. Okay, so I think we've uh, 
found some great people to talk to. Yeah, we've done really well. We started yeah. off with Robert, mm -hmm. so he, he was a good some, choice. He had some great insight. I think it's yeah. interesting to see what um, someone in his position has to say. And we even got a faculty member, which was awesome. Yeah, yeah. It was good to change that perspective from the students to the faculty. Mm -hmm. It's the whole 93%. It was really good to hear their voice. Yeah, absolutely. And then um, speaking to ASUOP, the... Um, yeah, we got the chief of staff, the vice president, and even the president. So yeah. it was awesome. Once again, good perspectives. Yeah. Um, I think the next move is to talk to the actual students, like just everyday students, some who know, some who don't know, just see what they're Yeah, ask them some questions. Yeah. That's a good, really good idea. Yeah. Yeah, well, it's a school day, so might as well just do it now. Yeah, cool, let's yeah, head perfect. up. Let's get it done. Can you state your name and your major? Uh, Eduardo Chavez ask you business law. Jaden Tubbs, and I'm a speech language pathology major. My name's Astrid Marin, and I'm a bio major. Uh, Caesar, Caesar Ramirez. What's your major? I'm a geology major. Austin Schmidt, I'm a bioengineering major. Did you know that 93% of faculty voted no confidence in President Ivan? No, but I, I remember it was pretty high. Yeah. Yes. So this doesn't surprise you? No. I did know that, yeah. Does, so this doesn't surprise you? Nah, it doesn't, to be honest. That does, because I feel like if, nine, you said 93%, I feel like that's like basically everyone, so it's probably like the top seven or like the most important people, so that's the only reason she's staying, right? How are things in the academic department? Um, decent, but uh, I have a lot of friends that like in other departments where it's lacking, like teachers um, aren't able to get the things that they need, um, the funding is not really there for other majors. People seem unhappy, but I'm not really sure like for why, because I haven't really like looked much into it. What do you think about the 3.2% increase in tuition that the president called for? Um, I think it's outrageous. I mean, you know, not just with the with the increase, but also just uh, budget cuts throughout the campus, cutting teachers teacher salaries, professors. Meanwhile, like, um, you know, her salary is untouched. Her salary is increasing. It's just ridiculous. She has a large salary, and she's supposed to have um, a huge role on campus. And I feel like that presence is not met at all. I have heard about that and I think it seems kind of shady because a lot of people are saying that they don't know why or where that's coming from, but they just know that she keeps raising tuition, so like kind of shady to me, yeah. Did you know the athletic department overspent their budget by $4 million? That would not surprise me. So because of this, do you think the athletic department um, is partially to blame for the I believe so, yes. Yeah, the management, yeah, definitely. Um, I mean, it seems like a large portion of money, so I can say that, yeah, probably that seems the logical reason I think athletics is to blame for like financial problems across all kinds of school boards and things like that even in my old high school athletics took over lots of the funding do you have any like opinions about Pam do you know anything about her um I don't really know about her all I know is all the funny memes that I see on Twitter so <laughs> I don't know I don't have like a large opinion on that but it does seem like a lot of classmates are unhappy so just not hands-on. She's not hands-on hands -on at all. She's not on campus. She doesn't know what's going on. So it's hard for her to just, I think, just understand the struggles students are going through financially, academically. I don't see really where our money is going for tuition. And it just kind of makes me a little bit sad because I did believe in this school a lot when I came here first. And I, it just makes me a little sad that people that don't have the financials to pay for it are struggling and may have to leave this school, especially like me, like I've taken out loans for this school and for tuition to just keep increasing, it definitely makes me a bit upset. I just feel like funding, funding wise, I feel like it's all going in the wrong places. And um, that's pretty much, I think, the biggest thing. So you think funds are mismanaged? Yes, yeah, definitely. So do you think she's an unfit leader? Yes. Nope. Dear Pam, over the past couple of weeks, the student body and faculty have expressed deep concerns about the future of the University of the Pacific and your role as president. We have therefore taken it upon ourselves to investigate, collect, and exhibit information and opinions regarding the current state of the university and its leadership. President Ibeck, it's your job to secure a financial base sufficient to allow the delivery of the university's mission, aims, and objectives. We are asking you to please do it properly. Your students and faculty have spoken. They want budget transparency, effective communication, and no more secrecy. It is now your turn. Please, make a change. Hear our voices and save this university. Sincerely, your Pacific community.